Hi, welcome back to SQL Server 2016 Administration. This is Section 4, where we look at administering database objects. In this section, we're going to take a look at the different objects that are inside of our database and look at the purposes of each one. Specifically, we'll learn how to work with tables, views, store procedures, and functions. And we'll also talk about the special nature of assemblies and their related objects. We'll also look at in-memory tables. We'll look at durable and non-durable tables and how they're used. This is the video on tables. In this video, we're going to take a look at what a table is and how it can be used. We'll look at how we can create a table and how we can alter a table after it exists. And there are different types of objects inside of each database, and this whole section will cover different types. Uh, we'll look at tables, views, etc. In this particular section, we are, or this particular module, we are going to look at tables themselves. And note, we're going to look at regular tables here, durable and non-durable in-memory OLTP table, we'll be covered later in this section. Now, permissions have already been covered in a bit. But by default, understand that users have no access to any object at all unless they've been granted permissions. Tables are the most common structure in a database. This is, in fact, where we store all of our user data. The table, in, set, in essence, is similar to an Excel spreadsheet with defined columns of a particular type and name, other properties, and then rows that actually contain the data. Now, the data is stored uh, the same for each row, so each row looks the same, with the same number of columns, type, and order. So unlike Excel, where I, I may actually have different items I may put in each row, here everything will be the same. Let's take a look at tables in more detail. We go back to Management Studio. I think if you remember in a previous module, we actually looked at one of our tables. For example, let's look at the Employees table. If I come here and see under my Tables folder, I have two tables here, one of which is the Employees table. And if I expand this, you notice I have a number of items in here. Now there are columns in this table. In this case, I have five columns in this table. This shows me the name is the first thing. So the name of this column is ID. The name is first name, last name, title, and salary. Each column has a type and then a null setting as well. There are other, other properties I can view as well. There are keys on the table. And we'll talk a little bit later about keys, constraints, and indexes. I can have triggers on the table, which are actions, and we'll cover those in another module. And the statistics have to do with performance. They're not really important for us. Let's create a new table, though, in this case. To do that, I use the Create Table statement. In this case, the structure is I have to give the table a name, so let's call this Pact. And then the next part is parentheses. Inside of these parentheses, this will define my table size and the way that the table looks. For example, Perhaps I want a column that I'm going to call the book ID, and I can give this a type. There are numerous types inside of SQL Server that I can choose. I have integers or numeric values that are non-decimal numbers, they're whole integers. I also have character values, for example, where I can choose a character value, or I can choose a variable character value. Which you choose really depends on what the purpose is of your column and your table. The discussion of which ones to choose is kind of beyond the scope of this particular uh, video and section, but keep in mind you have these choices. I can give this a size. I also can give this a setting, whether this is a null or not null. By default, most columns are null, so this column would be null, but I can choose not null if I wish. And I can continue on adding more columns, giving each one a name. I have dates, I have date times, I have just time values that I can choose. When I'm done, I can stop and that would be the end of my table. Now one thing to note, in general, while this is not a course on database design, uh, in general we do want to be careful and make sure that we have what's called a primary key on all of our tables. So we want to pick at least one column that's our primary key. If I execute this, this will create a table. You'll notice I get the command completed successfully here. And if I come back to my system and I refresh the tables, you'll see I've got a table here. And if I go down, we'll see that it's got the three columns. Note the little key icon here indicates this is the primary key. And it's got the other settings that I've listed there. I can actually alter a table as well. Let's look at that. So if I wanted to alter my table packed, I can add a column. I can add a check constraint, I can add various items, but let's add one more column in there and let's say this is published. 
and I want to make this a bit, which means it'll either be true or false. And we'll choose not null, and I'll add a default of zero. Oh, hold on, I broke something there. I spelled it wrong. All right, let's, so let's, I'm going to save this. Let's go back to the same alter table. So we can also alter a table and I'll show you how I can do that. I've got a script I'm going to paste in here. I use the alter table command, which means I want to change an existing object. Let's give it a name. In this case, we're going to alter the pack table. I'm going to add a column here. Now I could add multiple things here. Various items I could add, a constraint, a default, other things. In this case, I'm going to add a column. I give it a name and a type again. I have not null. And this time I've added one more setting, the default. So I have the default of zero. When I run this, it will alter the table. And if I were to refresh this and look, you see that I've added a new column here. I do have a GUI designer if I wanted to create a new table here. You'll notice this time I get a kind of a list here that allows me to change things. So let's create a new table again. And let's assume this is a video table where I'm going to store videos. So I want to set a video ID. And again, I'll make that a name. Video name. And we'll make that a varchar. We won't allow nulls here. And let's say a release date. We'll call that a date. Now, as I do this, you'll notice that I have a number of items I can choose. For example, do I allow nulls for this particular column, the release date? What's my data type? And so we've changed that to date, so it's here. Is there a default value? I could do that. Have I created a computer column? Do I have any of these other items of an identity? You can see there's a number of items in here. I can hit save and create this table, or I can script it uh, either way. Just for the sake of making this easier, I'll say save, and we'll call this packet video. And once that's done, I've created the table. I can close this, and if I come back over here and refresh this list, see I've got the packed video. And again, it'll have those three columns that I created in there. That's in general how I create and alter tables. I certainly could go back to the designer for this table and add another column, for example, demo. Call that a date as well. Save this if I want, or I could script it out, but I'll still ahead and save it. And when I go back here and see this, I've got the four columns in there. That's how essentially we work with tables. There's a lot more to cover here, a lot more theory about how and why we choose names, how we why we choose columns, how and why we choose the different data types or the various other options that we can set with tables. There's more to cover and I encourage you to learn more, but if you do need to create tables, this is essentially the process.